As we all know, making quality flowers in Houdini can be a bit cumbersome. So I've made a set of HDAs called Flops, which are centered around Kinefix and simplify the generation and animation of flowers. You can get the Flops toolkit for free on Gumroad or from GitHub. Both are linked in the description. In this video, we'll have a quick look at some example files and do a quick overview of how the toolkit works. Flops comes with two recipe presets and this example hip file, which will help you understand how to use flops. Let's start out by having a look at the configure symbol flower recipe, which you're seeing a render from here. So let's drop down a geometry container and dive inside. We'll search for flops, configure, we get cactus or simple flower. We'll choose simple flower and drop that down. And we're now visualizing this null called in flower. And if we play it on the animation timeline, we see it, it kind of comes in and then it blooms out. This null is located right before a vellum simulation, which is set up to ensure that we don't get these intersections here in the flower. If we go to the top here, we start out with just a petal shape, a flops petal shape, where you can control things about the resolution of the flower and the shape. This goes into a copy capture along with a Philotexas node, which controls how many petals you want. And this copy capture has some parameters to control the bone capture of the petals and the orientation of the copies. Then we have two outputs, we have a mesh and we have a skeleton. And since this is all based on Kinefix, we feed these two into a bone deform along with an animated skeleton. And the skeleton we have here is animated using a flops pose blend which is a node that just blends between two skeletons. So first we shape a butt pose using this flops flower pose node, which has some parameters for how to shape the root, the spine and the arms of the skeleton. And over here we have a bloom pose shaped also with the flops flower pose. We feed those into the flops flower blend, which has some parameters about how fast do we want the animation? Like how long do we want it to be? This is a short one, we can do a longer one. And it also has some parameters about limiting the growth. So we can see if we don't limit the growth here, if we just set this to one and one, we get this ugly pose here, but because we don't want the inner petals to grow as much as the outer petals, we limit the growth of the inner petals. Because we're feeding this into vellum, we need some pre-roll where the flowers definitely aren't intersecting. So that's what we're doing here with flops deintersect, which just creates this animation as pre-roll for us. So vellum can start out the simulation without any intersections. If we visualize this bone deform here, we can see that at any point we can still go back and we can say, we don't quite like the shape of this petal. So maybe we, maybe we need a bit more resolution. Maybe it shouldn't be so wide. Maybe it actually needs a little dent here like so. And then we move on because now we're happy. So right before the sim, we add this mesh detail, which just adds a little bit of detail to the surface of the petals. Then we have the vellum sim, which by default is configured to just have a well-behaved vellum simulation. So we don't get any ugly intersections between the flowers, but we also get the movement that we've defined here. There's a bit of cleaning attributes and just adding a bit more mesh detail at the end here, but the result gets fed into this lopnet. net. 
which if I just cache out some of the animation here, we can see that by default, we have a preset material put on it, which is set up with a copnet, which also internally uses some flops nodes to make the coloring and the bump and the roughness. So that's all ready to render as a little preset flower. So there we go. And yeah, at any point we can go back and we can change the shape again. Maybe we didn't like this dent, who knows. We just need to run the simulation again and then we're ready to render a new flower. Now let's have a look at the cactus preset. So we'll drop down another geometry container and we'll search for cactus. This should be the only cactus in your tab menu. So we'll put that down. And we see this. So this is because it has some hair on it. If we go up here to animated flower, we hit play. We have this little cactus succulent thing growing. And the setup is very similar to before. The main difference is that instead of starting out with a petal shape, we're starting out with a line, which we're feeding into a flop skeleton from curve, which converts the line into a flops skeleton. Then we use a flops sweep skeleton, which sweeps the skeleton. And we use a flops cap copy capture just like before, except in this case, we're actually doing some of the transforms on this node here. Then we have a mesh and we have a skeleton. We feed the skeleton into two poses, a bud pose and a bloom pose. And in between here, we add a little bit of noise, which just adds a bit of imperfection to the way these spines are positioned. And we have the flops pose blend, just like before. And we add a little bit of noise just to get a bit of keep alive movement. And then a bone to form. And here we're just using some standard hair gen tools in Houdini, some standard grooming tools to add a little bit of fuzz on the surface of our cactus. This is also set up with a default lap net, which my Houdini didn't like. There we go. So if we start the render on this, you can see that it looks like this. Very nice. All right. Okay, so the next example we'll have a look at is a lotus flower. And here we have three parts of the flower's anatomy. We have the petals, we have, just like we did before, but now we also have a pistil, which is this thick central part here, and the stamen, which are these thin filaments that produce and release pollen. The petals are produced exactly the same way. Flops petal shape and a philotaxis going into a copy capture. But then the stamen are very similar to the cactus. It's a line fed into a flops skeleton from curve, fed into a flops sweep skeleton but then it gets merged with some other geometry. And that's just this little pod that I made here for the tip using standard SOPS tricks. We merge them together and just like before, copy capture with a fill axis. And there we go. Very similar thing over here with the pistol. It's just a line. Skeleton from curve, sweep the skeleton, and then some SOPS tricks to end up with this. And then we just use a Kinefix bone capture proximity here 
because we're not actually copying anything. So there's no reason to use that custom node that requires more inputs. We're just using a bone capture proximity. So now we have the pistol skeleton here. We have the pistol mesh. And over here, we have the stamen skeleton and stamen mesh. So we feed these, these three parts each into a merge mesh and a merge skeletons. And then everything works just the same as before. We have these flops flower poses that make two versions of the flower, two, two poses of the flower. Then we blend between them with a pose blend, just like so. De intersect because we need a vellum simulation on the petals. Bone deform, a little bit of mesh detail, not very noticeable. Then into the vellum sim and here, because the lotus flower has kind of thick, thick petals, we've added this vellum post process that has extrude by thickness enabled. So we just get a little bit of, little bit of thickness, and we merge the things together again, and we can watch this play. There you go. So if we right click here and we look at the flops tab menu, we can see that there are a lot of nodes that we didn't look at at all in this video. There's also a lot of nodes that we only just glossed over. We actually glossed over everything. Um, so <laughs> expect more videos covering flops nodes and the setups more in depth along with more feature updates. Uh, so please let me know if there's a feature you want to see implemented in flops or if there's a topic you'd like covered. I'd love to hear your feedback and I'm really excited to see all the beautiful flora that you guys make.